Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into a captivating topic, hybrid orbitals and their role in covalent bonds within molecules. Let's start by understanding what hybrid orbitals are. These orbitals provide us with a useful framework within valence bond theory, allowing us to explain covalent bonding in molecules. Particularly, they come into play when dealing with molecules that have an octet or fewer electrons around the central atom. Additionally, their usage ties closely to the molecular geometry forecasted by the VSEPR model. While the concept of hybrid orbitals might not always predict outcomes, it becomes a valuable tool when we already know the electron domain geometry. This knowledge aids us in describing the atomic orbitals utilized by the central atom when forming bonds. So, let's embark on this journey of understanding hybrid orbitals and their significance in the world of covalent bonds. Welcome back, students. Our exploration continues with a deeper look into the role of valence bond theory in understanding bonding. This theory plays a crucial role in explaining how atoms come together to form molecules. Covalent bonds, in particular, emerge when atomic orbitals overlap, resulting in the sharing of electrons. This sharing is where hybrid orbitals come into play as a descriptive tool. They help us make sense of this electron sharing and distribution providing a more comprehensive picture of molecular structure. As we venture further, remember that the interaction of these orbitals guides the formation of covalent bonds, enriching our understanding of the intricate world of molecules. Hello again, curious minds. Today, we're going to dive into the fascinating connection between the octet rule, molecular geometry, and hybridization. The octet rule is a fundamental principle guiding how atoms bond to achieve stability. It states that atoms tend to share electrons to achieve a stable electron configuration, often resembling the noble gases configuration. This sharing results in a specific molecular geometry, which can be predicted using the VSEPR model. And here's where hybridization comes into play. When we know the electron domain geometry, Hybridization helps us understand how atomic orbitals mix to create hybrid orbitals, aligning with the predicted molecular shape. Isn't it incredible how these concepts interweave to shape the world of chemistry? Welcome to an exciting phase of our journey, students. We're about to uncover the practical implications of hybrid orbitals in atomic bonding. When atoms bond, they utilize these hybrid orbitals to achieve the molecular geometry predicted by the VSEPR model. By aligning the hybrid orbitals with the molecular shape, we gain a better grasp of how electrons are arranged around the central atom. This alignment enhances our understanding of the atomic bonding process, highlighting the close relationship between hybridization and the VSEPR model. As we move forward, Keep in mind that these concepts offer a key to unlocking the secrets of molecular structure. Hello, eager learners. Let's wrap up our journey by exploring the practical applications of hybrid orbitals. These concepts aren't just theoretical, they have real-world significance. Chemistry utilizes hybridization to unravel the behavior of molecules, guiding our understanding of their properties and reactions. This interplay between theory and experimentation is what drives scientific discovery. So, as you reflect on our discussion today, remember that hybrid orbitals are more than just abstract ideas they are tools that empower us to comprehend the intricacies of molecular existence. Keep asking questions and exploring the world of chemistry with enthusiasm. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the world of molecular bonding and the intriguing concept of hybrid orbitals. To understand this, we'll follow a systematic approach. Our journey begins with step 1. Drawing the Lewis structure for the molecule or ion. This structure provides us with a visual representation of the atom's valence electrons and their bonding arrangement. Moving on to step 2, we encounter the VSEPR model, which helps us determine the electron domain geometry around the central atom. This geometry gives us insights into the spatial arrangement of electron pairs. Now, in step 3, we embark on a crucial phase, specifying the hybrid orbitals required to accommodate these electron pairs. The arrangement we obtain from the VSEPR model guides us to the appropriate hybridization. 
This information is beautifully summarized in Table 9.4, serving as our roadmap in the world of hybrid orbitals. Remember, the hybridization process allows atoms to adapt and form strong bonds, enhancing the stability of molecules. As we navigate through these steps, you'll witness the intricate dance of electrons and orbitals, leading to the formation of diverse molecular structures. Get ready to uncover the secrets behind molecular geometry and hybridization. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the captivating world of vision and the intricate mechanism behind it. Our journey commences within the eye itself. Light enters the eye and is expertly focused by the lens onto a crucial layer called the retina. This remarkable layer lines the interior of the eyeball and plays a pivotal role in converting light into visual signals. Within the retina, we find two remarkable types of photoreceptor cells, rods and cones. The rods are our heroes in dim light conditions, aiding us in night vision. On the other hand, cones are responsible for our perception of colors. It's incredible to think about how our eyes adapt to varying light levels and hues. But how do these cells actually function? Let's journey deeper into the cellular realm to understand the molecules that make this magic possible. Welcome, students, to an exciting dive into the world of vision and the captivating science behind it. Our journey starts by exploring the role of retinal in our ability to see. Have you ever wondered how light transforms into the sensation of vision? Well, let's break it down. The rigidity of double bonds in retinal plays a crucial role here. In its normal state, retinal is held rigid by these double bonds. Now, when light enters the eye, it's absorbed by a molecule called rhodopsin. This is where the magic happens. The energy from the light breaks a specific portion of the double bond known as the pi bond. This breaking allows rotation around the bond axis, causing a change in the geometry of the retinal molecule. As a consequence, retinal separates from opsin, which is another component. This separation triggers a cascade of reactions that ultimately result in a nerve impulse being sent to the brain. And what does the brain interpret this impulse as? That's right, the sensation of vision. It's astounding that just five photons of light, that's five minuscule packets of light energy, can set off this intricate process and stimulate the eye to perceive the world around us. Let's move on to uncover more mysteries of science. Hello again, students. Now, let's embark on a journey into the intricate world of orbital arrangements and bonds. In our pursuit of understanding chemical interactions, we encounter various types of bonds, single, double, and triple. These bonds come with unique orbital arrangements that dictate their behavior and properties. In a single bond, atoms share one pair of electrons, forming a sigma, sigma, bond. When it comes to double bonds, there's not only a sigma bond but also a pi, pi, bond, which involves the overlap of p orbitals. Triple bonds are even more fascinating, as they consist of a sigma bond and two pi bonds. The arrangement of these orbitals plays a crucial role in how these bonds influence molecules' structures and reactivity. Now, let's delve deeper and explore instances where pi electrons exhibit delocalization. Greetings, curious minds. Our exploration takes us to the concept of delocalization of pi electrons. Imagine pi electrons as a cloud of electrons that isn't bound to a single bond but rather stretches across multiple adjacent atoms. This phenomenon is known as delocalization, and it brings about some intriguing effects. Delocalization can occur in molecules with multiple bonds, especially in cases where there's resonance. This phenomenon enhances the stability of molecules, making them less prone to reactive behavior. One classic example is the benzene ring, where delocalization of pi electrons creates a ring of enhanced stability. This is why benzene and other aromatic compounds exhibit distinct properties. So, remember, the world of pi electrons is much more dynamic than it might seem at first glance. With these insights, we're building a strong foundation for understanding complex molecular behaviors. Welcome back, dear students. Today, our journey delves deeper into the world of chemical bonding, particularly focusing on covalent bonds and their fascinating characteristics. So, imagine you have a covalent bond, 
and what's truly intriguing is where the electron density is located within it. In the covalent bonds we've explored so far, the electron density is uniquely concentrated along a specific path, the line that connects the nuclei of the bonded atoms. This line is known as the internuclear axis. Now, let's talk about a specific type of covalent bond, the p-bond. In a p-bond, there are these captivating regions of overlap located both above and below the internuclear axis. And guess what? These overlapping regions collectively constitute a single p-bond. Isn't that something? Let's visualize this concept further. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the world of covalent bonding and exploring a specific type called sigma, sigma, bonds. Covalent bonding occurs when atoms share electrons, creating a strong bond between them. Now, what's fascinating about sigma bonds is the way they form. Imagine two nuclei approaching each other and passing through the middle of the overlap region. This head-on overlap of atomic orbitals results in the formation of a sigma bond. This specific bond type is labeled as a sigma 1s 2 bond. Let's take a moment to visualize this process in our minds. Atoms coming together, their electron clouds overlapping directly, and a new bond being born. So, remember, sigma bonds are all about that head-on interaction. Moving forward, we'll explore some exciting examples of sigma bond formation. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of orbital overlap and its role in forming chemical bonds. Our journey begins with the overlap of two s orbitals. Imagine the interaction between two hydrogen atoms in a molecule of H2. Their s orbitals overlap, creating a strong bond that's the foundation of the molecule's stability. Next, we explore the intriguing overlap between an HS orbital and a CLP orbital in HCl. This interaction contributes to the formation of the HCl molecule. Moving on, let's talk about the overlap of two p orbitals in Cl2. The coalescence of these orbitals is the driving force behind the formation of the chlorine molecule. But our exploration doesn't stop there. We also delve into the overlap of an fp orbital with a bsp hybrid orbital in beryllium fluoride. This interaction is essential for constructing the beryllium fluoride molecule. Remember, the concept of orbital overlap is central to our understanding of chemical bonding. It's the interplay of these atomic orbitals that leads to the formation of stable molecules. Now, let's journey deeper into the intricacies of these overlaps and how they shape the molecular world around us. Good day, students. In today's lesson, we're delving into the fascinating realm of multiple bonding and exploring a different type of bond known as the pi bond. So far, we've learned about single bonds, but now we'll see how atoms can form even stronger connections. To understand multiple bonding, we need to introduce a new concept, the overlap of p orbitals. Imagine these orbitals as pathways around the nuclei of atoms. When two p orbitals orient perpendicularly to the internuclear axis and overlap sideways, they create what we call a pi 1 p 2 bond. Unlike the electron density concentrated along the internuclear axis in a s bond, in a pi bond, the overlap regions lie both above and below the internuclear axis. This creates a unique bond with distinct properties. It's important to note that due to the sideways orientation of p orbitals, the overlap in a pi bond is weaker compared to that in a s bond. Consequently, pi bonds are generally not as strong as s bonds. Now, let's take a closer look at the mechanisms of pi bonds and their significance in chemical bonding. Hello again, students. Today, we're delving deeper into the fascinating realm of chemical bonds. These bonds are like the glue that holds atoms together to form molecules. Let's start by discussing single bonds. In nearly all cases, single bonds are what we call S bonds. They involve the sharing of electrons between atoms. Moving on to double bonds, these are a bit more complex. A double bond consists of one S bond and one P bond. Remember, electrons come in different shapes called orbitals, and these bonds involve specific orbitals. Lastly, we have triple bonds. 
A triple bond is composed of one S bond and two P bonds. These bonds are strong and play a significant role in creating various molecular structures. To put it simply, single bonds are like handshakes, double bonds are like handshakes with a twist, and triple bonds are like intricate secret handshakes between atoms. As we continue, you'll see how these bonds shape the properties of different molecules. Welcome, dear students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of molecular structure, focusing on the intriguing compound ethene, with the molecular formula C2H4. Ethene structure is truly captivating, as it contains a carbon-carbon double bond, symbolized as CAC. What's even more remarkable are the bond angles around each carbon atom, which are all approximately 120 degrees. This suggests a specific type of hybridization called sp2 hybridization, which allows carbon atoms to form sigma. Sigma bonds with other carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. Now, let's explore this concept in more detail. Hello again, students. Today's journey takes us into the realm of sp2 hybridization and molecular geometry. Carbon, with its four valence electrons, undergoes a fascinating transformation during sp2 hybridization. Three of its valence electrons participate in forming sp2 hybrid orbitals, while one electron remains in an unhybridized 2p orbital. The arrangement of these hybrid orbitals results in a trigonal planar geometry around each carbon atom. This geometry facilitates the formation of strong sigma. Sigma, bonds between the carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. This is your teacher speaking. Let's continue, students. One particularly intriguing aspect of ethene structure is the unhybridized 2p orbital. This orbital remains perpendicular to the plane that contains the three sp hybrid orbitals. This orientation contributes to the unique properties and reactivity of ethene molecules. The unhybridized 2p orbital plays a crucial role in shaping the overall geometry and properties of the molecule. Now, let's move forward to gain a deeper understanding of the implications of these molecular arrangements. Thank you for your attention, and remember, learning is a journey. Welcome to our next chapter, students. Ethene's unique molecular structure has profound implications for its properties and reactivity. The arrangement of sigma, sigma, and pi, pi, bonds within the carbon-carbon double bond is of utmost importance. The presence of pi bonds introduces the concept of resonance, which further enhances the stability and reactivity of the molecule. These structural features directly influence how ethene participates in various chemical reactions and interacts with other substances. Let's delve into these concepts further as we uncover the intricate world of molecular properties. As our journey comes to an end, students, let's reflect on the captivating world of ethene's molecular structure. We explored the significance of sp2 hybridization the intriguing bond angles, and the role of the unhybridized 2p orbital. These factors collectively influence the molecule's reactivity, stability, and properties. Remember, the concepts we've uncovered today are just a glimpse into the vast realm of chemistry. They provide a foundation for understanding more complex molecules and their interactions. I encourage you to continue your exploration, as chemistry holds the keys to unraveling the mysteries of the natural world. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Hello, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of bond formation in molecules. Our focus is on the ethene molecule, where we'll walk through the steps of constructing its bonds. Specifically, we'll explore how sp2 hybrid orbitals come into play in this process. But first, let's understand the concept of sp2 hybridization. When carbon atoms are involved, the hybridization of their orbitals plays a crucial role. In ethene, each carbon atom has three sp2 hybrid orbitals, each containing one electron. Picture this. We're about to create a bond between two carbon atoms. Imagine the interaction between their sp2 hybrid orbitals, one from each atom. This interaction forms what we call a c not c sigma, sigma, bond, and it requires the utilization of two electrons. 
Let's move on to the next topic to delve even deeper into this fascinating journey. Welcome back, students. Now that we've understood how the CC Sigma, Sigma, bond is formed, let's explore the next step, the creation of CH bonds in ethene. We've got some sp2 hybrid orbitals left on our carbon atoms, and we're going to put them to use. These sp2 hybrid orbitals will overlap with the one's orbitals on hydrogen atoms. This overlap gives birth to what we call CH sigma, sigma, bonds. What's truly fascinating is that we employ a total of eight more electrons to establish these four CH bonds. If we sum it up, out of the 12 valence electrons in the C2H4 molecule, a whopping 10 electrons are engaged in crafting these S bonds. But our journey doesn't end here. Stay curious as we dive into even more intricate aspects of molecular bonding in the upcoming topics. Hello again, students. Now, let's dive into the world of molecular orbital formation in a molecule called ethene. As we know, each carbon atom in ethene has two remaining valence electrons residing in unhybridized 2p orbitals. These two orbitals can interact in a unique way. They can overlap sideways with each other. Visualize this overlap as shown in figure 9.22. As a result of this overlapping, something fascinating occurs. Electron density becomes concentrated both above and below the axis of the C-C bond. This concentrated electron density forms what we call a P-bond, which is depicted in figure 9.20. In the ethene molecule, the C-C double bond is not just one type of bond but actually consists of two types of bonds an S-bond and a P-bond. Isn't it amazing how these interactions at the atomic level create the complex bonds that make up the molecules we encounter every day? Let's move forward and explore more intriguing concepts. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into an intriguing topic pi bonds and the structure of ethene. Pi bonds might not be directly observable, but we have solid evidence for their existence. Let's explore the remarkable characteristics of ethene that lend strong support to the presence of these bonds. First off, we have the CC bond length in ethene which is significantly shorter than in compounds with single CC bonds. This shorter bond length, just 134 picometers, is a clear indicator of a stronger C equals C double bond. Moving on to our second point, all six atoms in the ethene molecule lie in the same plane. This arrangement is crucial because the P orbitals on each carbon atom, responsible for forming the pi bond, can only achieve optimal overlap when the two CH2 fragments lie in the same plane. It's fascinating how pi bonds introduce rigidity into molecules due to their requirement for planar portions. Ethene structure provides a vivid illustration of this phenomenon. So, let's proceed to unravel more about pi bonds and their impact on molecular structure. Welcome back, students. We're on our journey to understand pi bonds better. Now, you might wonder, if we can't directly observe pi bonds, how do we know they're there? Well, it's all about inference. We rely on the positions of atoms in a molecule to draw conclusions about the presence of pi bonds. Take ethene, for example, its unique characteristics provide compelling evidence for pi bonds. The CC bond in ethene is shorter than single bonds, indicating a stronger bond due to the presence of a pi bond. But that's not all. Our next point takes us into the world of molecular arrangement. For those p orbitals to efficiently overlap and form a pi bond, the atoms they belong to need to lie in the same plane. This planar alignment is a key factor in pi bond formation. So, remember, even though pi bonds might remain unseen, their effects are profound and visible in the structure and behavior of molecules. Great to have you all here, students. Let's dive deeper into the elegance of ethene structure and its connection to pi bonds. As we've discussed, all six atoms in ethene lie in a single plane. This arrangement is essential for the formation of pi bonds. The p orbitals on each carbon atom can effectively overlap and create a pi bond only when these atoms are in the same plane. This requirement for planar alignment introduces rigidity into molecules. Ethene structure beautifully demonstrates how pi bonds influence molecular geometry. The presence of pi bonds doesn't just impact structure. 
It also plays a vital role in molecular stability. This stability arises from the energy associated with the pi bond and its ability to keep the atoms bonded together. Let's continue our exploration of pi bonds and the captivating world of molecular interactions. Hello again, students. We're about to uncover more about the intriguing effects of pi bonds. We've talked about how pi bonds introduce rigidity into molecules due to their requirement for planar alignment. This rigidity, however, comes with a trade-off. While it limits flexibility, it also enhances stability. This balance between flexibility and stability is crucial in functional molecules. Take ethene, for instance. Its structure showcases the rigidity introduced by pi bonds. Now, why is this important in real-world applications? Well, think about the structural components of materials, the specificity of biological molecules, and the behavior of compounds in chemical reactions. All of these are influenced by the balance between rigidity and flexibility introduced by pi bonds. So, as we proceed, keep in mind the fascinating interplay between molecular rigidity and the dynamic world of chemical reactions. Hello, students. Today, we're delving into the realm of molecular structures and the intriguing concept of hybrid orbitals. We'll be focusing on a specific example, ethyne, C2H2 which contains a remarkable triple bond. Picture this. A linear molecule with the arrangement HC is defined as CH. This linear geometry hints at the utilization of hybrid orbitals. In ethyne, each carbon atom employs sp hybrid orbitals to form sigma. Sigma bonds with the other carbon atom and one hydrogen atom. The result is a linear arrangement that showcases the power of hybridization. But what happens to the other orbitals? Well, each carbon atom has two unhybridized 2p orbitals perpendicular to each other and the axis of the sp hybrid set. These unhybridized orbitals hold the key to the formation of pi, pi, bonds. When these p orbitals overlap, they create a pair of pi, pi, bonds, working in harmony with the sigma bond to form the iconic triple bond in ethyne. So, to summarize, the ethyne triple bond is composed of one sigma bond and two pi, pi, bonds. Isn't chemistry fascinating? Let's move on to more captivating insights. Hello there, students. Today, we're delving into a fascinating topic, the formation of P bonds and the role of hybridization in this process. As we explore, keep in mind that P bonds are formed through the overlap of P orbitals. However, there's a catch. These P bonds can only form if the bonded atoms have unhybridized P orbitals. This means that atoms with sp or sp2 hybridization are the ones that can engage in the creation of p bonds. Now, let's talk about the prevalence of double and triple bonds, which are associated with p bonds. In molecules composed of period 2 atoms, particularly carbon, C, nitrogen, N, and oxygen. Oxygen, these types of bonds are quite common. These smaller atoms have a greater tendency to form double and triple bonds showcasing the significance of p bonds in their chemistry on the other hand when we move to larger atoms such as sulfur s phosphorus p and silicon silicon the formation of p bonds becomes less frequent so remember that the nature of the atoms and their hybridization play a crucial role in determining the likelihood of p bond formation now let's dive even deeper into the intricacies of chemical bonding and hybridization Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of benzene's bonding structure and its hybridization. As we know, benzene has a total of 30 valence electrons. Now, to understand how these electrons participate in bonding, we first need to consider the molecular geometry. In benzene, each carbon atom is surrounded by three atoms at 120 degrees angles. This unique arrangement leads us to the choice of a specific hybridization scheme and that scheme is sp2 hybridization. Now, pay attention. Through this hybridization, six localized cc sigma bonds and six localized ch sigma bonds are formed. These bonds are derived from the sp2 hybrid orbitals, as you can see in figure 9.25, a. Uh. Remarkably, 24 of the valence electrons find their purpose in creating these strong sigma bonds. 
Now, let's move forward and uncover more about the fascinating world of benzene's molecular structure. Hello again, students. Today, we're delving into the captivating world of molecular structures, specifically focusing on benzene, which is represented by the chemical formula CBHB. As you can see in figure 9.25, benzene's molecular arrangement is truly intriguing. In panel, oh, we have the S bond framework. This represents the sigma bonds that are formed between the carbon atoms in benzene. Now, in panel, B, we move on to an equally fascinating aspect, the formation of P bonds. These P bonds originate from the unhybridized 2P orbitals on the six carbon atoms. When these orbitals overlap, they give rise to the double bonds we observe between the carbon atoms. These interactions contribute to the unique stability and structure of benzene. Remember, understanding molecular structures is crucial as they underpin the properties and behaviors of substances. Let's move forward to explore more. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of molecular structure, particularly in aromatic compounds. Our journey starts with the concept of hybridization. In aromatic compounds like benzene, each carbon atom undergoes sp2 hybridization, resulting in a unique molecular arrangement. Just like ethene, there's one p orbital on each carbon atom, oriented perpendicularly to the molecule's plane. However, the fascinating twist here is that we have not just one, but six p orbitals forming a ring-like arrangement, as depicted in figure 9.25, b. This leads us to the captivating structure of benzene. Now, Pay close attention as we explore how the six valence electrons find their place within these p orbitals. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of chemical bonding and resonance. Our focus is on the utilization of p orbitals in the formation of three localized p bonds. As we explore this topic, you'll find that there are intriguing aspects to consider. Let's proceed to understand the details. Welcome back, students. In our quest to understand chemical bonding further, let's dive right into the formation of localized p bonds using p orbitals. As you can see from the visual representation, p orbitals play a crucial role in the bonding process. Three localized p bonds can be established through the interaction of these orbitals. Now, let's unravel the concept of resonance, which is pivotal in our understanding of this topic. Hello again, dear students. Our journey into the world of resonance continues. When it comes to creating localized pi bonds, there are two equivalent ways, each corresponding to a resonance structure. These structures highlight the varying possibilities of bond formation. And here's the exciting part. When we want to represent both resonance structures accurately, we find that the six pi electrons get smeared out among all six carbon atoms. This concept might seem complex, but as we delve deeper, it will become clearer. Welcome to the next stage of our exploration, students. Now, we're going to visually explore how both resonance structures come together to provide us with a comprehensive view. In the representation where both structures are considered, the 6p electrons are distributed across all six carbon atoms. This intriguing concept enhances our understanding of how electrons are involved in bonding scenarios. Remember, resonance serves as an essential tool for grasping the complexities of bonding. Hello once more, students. As we approach the culmination of our lesson, let's truly embrace the complexity of resonance. The idea of electron delocalization might be new to you, but it's a crucial concept in understanding bonding. With multiple resonance structures, we gain a more complete perspective on how electrons are distributed among atoms. This intricate dance of electrons across molecules adds depth to our comprehension of chemical interactions. So, remember, complexity is an opportunity for growth in our knowledge. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of chemical bonds and molecular structures. Our journey takes us to the intriguing prediction about carbon-carbon bond lengths. Imagine a world where all carbon-carbon bonds exhibit the same length, 
This prediction is based on a model that suggests these bond lengths will fall between that of a single carbon-carbon bond, measuring around 154 picometers, and a double carbon-carbon bond, measuring approximately 134 picometers. Now, here's the captivating part. This prediction beautifully aligns with the observed carbon-carbon bond length in a well-known molecule, benzene. In benzene, each carbon-carbon bond stretches about 140 picometers, showcasing the harmony between theory and reality. So, let's dive deeper into the intricacies of molecular bonds and unveil the magic behind these predictions. Welcome back, students. Let's unravel the wonders of benzene. Benzene is a remarkable molecule with a hexagonal structure, often symbolizing the aromatic compounds we encounter. What's truly fascinating is that each carbon atom in the benzene ring is bonded to two other carbon atoms, alternating between single and double bonds. This arrangement gives rise to its unique properties. Now, pay close attention. The carbon-carbon bond length in benzene measures around 140 picometers. And guess what? The model's prediction of carbon-carbon bond lengths, lying between those of single and double bonds, perfectly matches the observed bond length in benzene. This alignment between prediction and reality showcases the power of scientific models in understanding the molecular world. Greetings, students. Let's venture further into the realm of molecular mysteries. Our model's prediction about carbon-carbon bond lengths has broader implications. Imagine exploring different molecules and finding that the carbon-carbon bonds, regardless of the molecule's complexity, exhibit a uniformity that aligns with the predicted range between single and double bond lengths. This isn't just a coincidence. We've already seen how this prediction holds true for benzene's carbon-carbon bond length of 140 picometers. This consistency is more than just a scientific curiosity. It deepens our understanding of molecular structures and the forces that shape them. As we journey on, keep in mind that these predictions help us peek into the hidden world of atoms and bonds. Hello again, bright minds. Our exploration of carbon-carbon bond lengths is unlocking captivating mysteries in the world of molecular bonding. Imagine looking at various molecules and realizing that the carbon-carbon bonds within them maintain a uniformity, just as our model predicted. How does this happen? The model points to the delicate balance between single and double bond characteristics, resulting in an average bond length that's consistent across molecules. Visualizing these molecular structures helps us appreciate the intricate dance of atoms as they come together to form bonds. Understanding bond lengths isn't just an exercise in numbers, it's a key that unlocks the secrets of chemical reactions, materials, and more. Stay curious as we journey onward into the heart of molecular bonding. Welcome to our final topic, Inquisitive Minds. We've embarked on an awe-inspiring journey through the world of carbon-carbon bond lengths and their predictions. What's the big takeaway from this adventure? It's about the power of predictive models in shaping our understanding of the natural world. These models bridge the gap between theoretical predictions and real-world observations. Think of them as guiding stars that help us navigate the complex seas of chemistry. As we apply these predictions to diverse chemical scenarios, we must also recognize the importance of refining our models over time. Science thrives on curiosity, collaboration, and the courage to embrace uncertainties. So, keep your scientific spirits high, for every discovery, like our journey today, adds a new layer to the tapestry of human knowledge. Thank you for joining me on this exploration. Welcome back, students. In our next topic, we're diving into the fascinating world of electron delocalization in pi bonds. Particularly, let's explore how this concept relates to the intriguing molecule known as benzene. Instead of thinking of individual bonds between neighboring atoms, we describe benzene's unique structure as having a six-electron p system that is shared among its six carbon atoms. This electron delocalization is responsible for the exceptional stability that benzene possesses. It's interesting to note that the concept of delocalization doesn't stop here. It also plays a role in the vibrant colors of many organic molecules. Now, let's proceed to delve deeper into the impact of delocalized p bonds on a molecule's geometry. 
As we venture further, students, we encounter a significant aspect related to delocalized p bonds, their impact on a molecule's geometry. For these p orbitals to efficiently overlap and allow for electron delocalization, all the atoms participating in the delocalized p bonding network must lie in the same plane. This geometric requirement imposes a certain rigidity on the molecule structure. This rigidity is notably absent in molecules containing only S bonds. So, remember, the arrangement of atoms in the same plane due to delocalization is what gives molecules a distinct stability and structure. Now, let's explore a practical application of these concepts in the realm of chemistry and life. Today, students, we're connecting the dots between the concepts we've learned and their impact on the real world particularly in the fascinating field of vision. Delocalization of p-bonds plays a crucial role in understanding how we perceive colors. Think about it. When light interacts with molecules, it gets absorbed by specific groups of atoms known as chromophores. These chromophores owe their light-absorbing abilities to the delocalization of electrons in their p-bonds. This absorption of light is what gives rise to the vibrant colors we see around us. So, as we navigate the intricate world of molecular structures, remember that these concepts extend their influence to the colors that enrich our experiences. As we wrap up today's exploration, let's reflect on the significance of electron delocalization in molecular behavior. Delocalization is at the heart of the stability that molecules like benzene exhibit. It influences a molecule's geometry, imparting a unique rigidity due to the requirement of atoms lying in the same plane. We've also discovered how this concept stretches its influence into the realm of color perception, where chromophores, driven by delocalized p-bonds, absorb and emit light, giving rise to the vibrant world of colors. Remember, students, the world of chemistry is intricately woven into our daily experiences, from stability to color perception and beyond. Keep these concepts in mind as we continue our journey through the captivating world of science. Hello again, students. Today, let's delve into the realm of covalent bonding and hybrid orbitals. As we've learned, when atoms form bonds, they share electrons. Each bond line we draw in Lewis structures represents a pair of shared electrons, crucial for holding molecules together. Interestingly, in single bonds, like S bonds, a pair of electrons is localized in the space between the atoms. Now, here's a fascinating connection. The hybrid orbitals used to form these S bonds depend on the molecule's observed geometry. In other words, the shape of the molecule guides which hybrid orbitals come into play. For instance, when atoms are arranged in specific geometries, like linear or tetrahedral, there's a direct correlation to the hybrid orbitals used. Refer to Table 9.4 for more insight into this relationship. Let's continue uncovering the intriguing world of molecular structure. Hello, dear students. Welcome to our second topic, where we're delving into the concept of electron localization in S bonds. Now, you might wonder, what happens to those electrons in S bonds? Well, these electrons are primarily localized in the space between the two atoms that are bonded together. This localization means that they are closely associated with this particular bond and don't significantly contribute to the bonding between any other two atoms. This phenomenon is a key feature of how atoms form bonds, and understanding it will help us as we move forward in our exploration of chemical interactions. Let's move on to the next topic and continue our journey of discovery. Hello, students. Let's delve deeper into the fascinating realm of chemical bonds and electron sharing. When atoms engage in a strong connection by sharing more than one pair of electrons, we witness the formation of multiple bonds. These bonds come in two distinct flavors, sigma, sigma, bonds and pi, pi, bonds. Now, sigma bonds are like the foundation of this connection. They involve the sharing of a single pair of electrons and are known for their robust head on overlap between atomic orbitals. On the other hand, pi bonds are additional electron connections that arise from sideways overlapping of p orbitals. 
Think of sigma bonds as the strong central pillar and pi bonds as the supporting beams that contribute to the overall stability of the molecule. As we journey further, you'll see how these bonds play a crucial role in shaping the properties of molecules. Great job keeping up, students. Now, let's zoom in on the intricate details of pi bonds. When it comes to pi bonds, the centers of charge density are quite remarkable. These centers aren't situated on the internuclear axis like sigma bonds. Instead, they lie both above and below this axis. This unique arrangement is a key characteristic of pi bonds and sets them apart from other types of bonds. Remember, pi bonds usually accompany double or triple bonds, and they're formed through the lateral overlap of p orbitals. This arrangement creates a strong and resilient connection between atoms, contributing to the overall stability of the molecule. Keep your curiosity alive, because we're about to explore more captivating concepts. Well done, students. Now that we've uncovered the intricacies of sigma and pi bonds, let's see how they team up to reinforce molecular stability. When multiple bonds form in a molecule, both sigma and pi bonds play their roles in maintaining a strong connection. This teamwork contributes to the rigidity of the multiple bonded system. This rigidity, in turn, affects the molecule's physical and chemical properties. The arrangement of these bonds can influence how a molecule behaves, reacts, and interacts with its environment. It's fascinating to realize how these tiny connections on the atomic scale can have such a significant impact on the macroscopic properties we observe. Keep up the enthusiasm, because we're just scratching the surface of the captivating world of chemical bonds. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the captivating world of electron delocalization within extended pi systems. Let's begin by understanding what exactly an extended p system is. Imagine molecules where pi electrons, those involved in double bonds or aromatic systems, spread out over more than just two bonded atoms. This phenomenon is known as delocalization. In other words, these electrons aren't confined to a single bond but are free to move across multiple atoms. Now, how do we quantify the number of electrons within such a system? We can employ the procedures we've previously discussed in this section. These methods help us determine the electron count in the p-system, giving us insight into the fascinating behavior of these delocalized electrons. Let's visualize this concept with our next topic. Hello again, students. Our journey continues with a closer look at how extended pi systems work. Imagine a molecule where pi electrons are not just localized within individual bonds, but they extend their influence across multiple atoms. This extended distribution forms a cloud of electrons that hovers over a series of atoms, rather than being tightly bound to a single pair. This delocalization has a profound impact on how these electrons behave. They become more mobile, able to move freely and interact with neighboring atoms. This characteristic gives molecules some unique properties that we'll explore further in our next topic. Great to have you all with me, students. Today, we're uncovering the consequences of electron delocalization, and it's truly intriguing. One major outcome is the enhanced stability of molecules. Delocalized electrons spread their charge and help distribute energy more evenly, making the molecule less reactive. Moreover, delocalization can modulate various molecular properties, from reactivity to color. Now, here's an exciting connection. Aromatic compounds, like benzene, owe their stability and unique properties to delocalization. The resonance within the ring creates a system where pi electrons are free to roam, adding a layer of stability and distinct behavior. Let's explore this connection and more, as we journey ahead. Hello once again, students. Today's lesson wouldn't be complete without diving into the quantitative aspects of delocalization. How do we count those pi electrons in a molecule's extended pi system? We turn to Huckel's rule, a valuable tool for determining aromaticity. According to this rule, a molecule with 4n plus 2 pi electrons is aromatic, where n is an integer. For instance, Benzene with its 6 pi electrons, n equals 1, falls under this rule. 
As we explore examples of aromatic compounds, you'll see how this rule helps us understand and predict the behavior of these fascinating molecules. Get ready to be amazed by the connections between electron delocalization and aromaticity. Hello, dear students. Today, we're about to delve into the fascinating realm of molecular orbitals. But before we dive in, let's take a moment to draw a parallel with something you might find surprising the captivating meeting of two seas at Grenon Beach in Denmark. Just as the waves from different seas collide and interact, electrons in molecules also behave like waves that can interact with one another. Imagine these electrons as waves of the sea, at times reinforcing each other's behavior, and at other times, canceling each other out. This interaction between electron waves forms the basis of our model for understanding bonding. So, get ready to ride the waves of knowledge as we explore the intriguing concept of molecular orbitals. Greetings, students. Now, let's take a closer look at the wave-like nature of electrons. Just like light and sound waves, electrons too display wave-like behaviors. This means they have properties such as wavelength and frequency. When electrons interact, their wave patterns can overlap, creating fascinating interference patterns much like the waves at Grenon Beach. This overlap is crucial in shaping the energy levels and behaviors of electrons in molecules. Isn't it intriguing how the world of waves extends even to the microscopic realm of electrons? Welcome back, everyone. Now, let's dive into the heart of our topic the molecular orbital model. This theory introduces us to the idea that electrons don't just exist around individual atoms. They also form shared regions known as molecular orbitals when atoms come together to create molecules. These molecular orbitals emerge from the interaction of electron waves, much like the waves meeting at the boundary of two seas. We have two types of molecular orbitals, sigma, sigma, and pi, pi each with distinct shapes and energy characteristics. Let's move on to uncover the specific qualities of these molecular orbitals. Great job keeping up, students. Now, let's dive deeper into the different types of molecular orbitals. First up, we have sigma, sigma, molecular orbitals. These are formed when atomic orbitals directly overlap in a head-on fashion. This kind of overlap leads to strong bonding interactions between atoms. On the other hand, we have pi, pi, molecular orbitals, which result from side-to-side -side overlap of atomic orbitals. Pi orbitals are particularly interesting because they are often found in double and triple bonds, as well as in conjugated systems. Just like the meeting of two Cs can create intricate patterns, the interaction of atomic orbitals gives rise to these distinct molecular orbital shapes. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving deeper into the realm of molecular bonding with a focus on the valence bond theory. As we've learned, this theory helps us grasp the connections between Lewis structures, atomic orbitals, and molecular geometries. It's a powerful tool, but like any theory, it has its limitations. Valence bond theory falls short when it comes to explaining excited states of molecules those high-energy configurations that play a crucial role in phenomena like light absorption and the vibrant colors we observe. To truly understand why molecules absorb light and exhibit color, we need to explore beyond the confines of valence bond theory. Let's move forward and uncover the exciting world of molecular excited states. Hello again, young minds. Our journey into the mysteries of molecular bonding takes a fascinating turn as we shift our focus to excited states and their link to light absorption. Imagine molecules as tiny energy absorbers. When they encounter energy, they can leap to higher energy levels, also known as excited states. Now, let's zoom in on electrons, those tiny, energetic particles within atoms. These electrons are responsible for absorbing light in the form of photons, which prompts them to jump from one energy level to another. The frequency of the absorbed light determines the energy leap, and as we know, different energy levels translate to different colors. So, when molecules absorb light, they're not just changing energy states, they're painting the world with vibrant colors. Let's keep digging into this captivating realm. 
Good day, dear students. Today, we're unveiling an advanced concept that pushes the boundaries of our understanding. Molecular orbital theory. This theory goes beyond valence bond theory and dives headfirst into the world of molecular orbitals. Picture this. When atomic orbitals from different atoms overlap, they form molecular orbitals. These newly created orbitals can be either bonding, where electrons are shared constructively, or anti-bonding, where electrons are less likely to be found. Molecular orbital theory provides a comprehensive explanation for bonding, excited states, and light absorption, allowing us to explore even the most complex molecular interactions. As we continue our exploration, remember that the journey to understanding the intricacies of molecular bonding is as rewarding as it is enlightening. Welcome, curious minds, to a realm where complexity intertwines with beauty, the world of light absorption and molecular interactions. As we venture deeper, we encounter the intricate dance between molecular structure and energy transitions. The arrangement of atoms within a molecule directly affects how it absorbs and emits light. It's like a choreographed ballet of electrons moving between energy levels. This choreography gives rise to unique absorption spectra, like molecular fingerprints that reveal a substance's identity. And the applications? Endless. From understanding chemical reactions in biology, to designing new materials with specific properties, the insights we gather from light absorption phenomena fuel innovation across scientific disciplines. So, let's continue our intellectual journey, through this captivating landscape. Dear students, as we conclude today's exploration, let's take a moment to reflect on our voyage. We embarked on a journey from valence bond theory to the complex realm of molecular orbital theory, uncovering the secrets of light absorption, excited states, and the mesmerizing world of colors. We've witnessed the limitations of theories and the thrill of advancing our understanding. Remember, the world of molecular bonding is a never ending adventure with countless mysteries awaiting your inquisitive minds. So, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Until next time, stay curious. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're diving into the captivating world of molecular orbital theory. Just like we discussed atomic orbitals in Chapter 6, this sophisticated model takes us a step further into the understanding of bonding within molecules. So, let's draw a parallel here. Just as electrons within atoms have their unique wave functions, we call them atomic orbitals, in the realm of molecules, we have a similar concept. Molecular orbital theory describes how electrons within molecules can be visualized using specific wave functions. And each of these wave functions is termed a molecular orbital, or MO for short. This theory provides us with a deeper insight into the nature of chemical bonds. Let's proceed to unravel the intricacies of molecular orbital theory and its significance. Hello again, attentive minds. Let's jog our memories a bit. In Chapter 6, we got to know atomic orbitals, which are wave functions describing electrons within atoms. Now, here's the fascinating part. Molecular orbital theory brings a similar concept to the table. It describes the distribution of electrons in molecules using these wave functions. Think of wave functions as mathematical tools that help us understand how electrons behave within molecules. By grasping the distribution of these electrons, we can gain valuable insights into the formation of chemical bonds. The electron distribution plays a crucial role in defining the characteristics of molecules and their properties. So, let's roll up our sleeves and delve deeper into the world of molecular orbital theory. Greetings, curious learners. Here's a thought-provoking comparison for you. We've previously explored atomic orbitals, which lay out the behavior of electrons within individual atoms. Now, let's take a leap from the microcosm of atoms to the intricacies of molecules. Molecular orbital theory steps in to describe how electrons within molecules behave using the concept of molecular orbitals. It's like we're extending our understanding from single atoms to groups of atoms forming molecules. 
This transition is both enlightening and empowering as it gives us a comprehensive view of how atoms come together to create the world of chemistry. So, buckle up as we journey through the world of molecular orbitals and their significance in explaining bonding. Ahoy, inquisitive minds. It's time to unravel the beauty of molecular orbitals. These are like specialized wave functions that give us a detailed understanding of how electrons interact within molecules. Think of each molecular orbital as a unique dance floor where electrons groove to a specific rhythm. Depending on the molecule, we have a variety of these molecular orbitals, each with its own distinctive characteristics. The exciting part? These molecular orbitals hold the key to predicting a molecule's behavior, properties, and even its reactions with other molecules. So, let's put on our electron-tinted glasses and embark on a journey of discovery through the mesmerizing world of molecular orbital theory. Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of molecular orbitals, starting with a focus on the hydrogen molecule, WHO. Molecular orbital theory, or MO theory for short, offers us valuable insights into how atoms come together to form molecules. Let's begin our journey by understanding how molecular orbitals are constructed from atomic orbitals. When two atomic orbitals overlap, something remarkable happens. They give rise to two new molecular orbitals. In the case of WHO, we're working with the two ones atomic orbitals, one for each hydrogen atom. As these atomic orbitals overlap, they generate two molecular orbitals. The first molecular orbital, which we'll explore in detail, is created by combining the wave functions of the two ones orbitals. This process is known as a constructive combination, where the resulting molecular orbital possesses lower energy compared to the original atomic orbitals. We call this specific molecular orbital the bonding molecular orbital, and it plays a critical role in the stability of the hydrogen molecule. Now, let's proceed to the next topic to visualize this process. Welcome back, students. On this topic, we're diving deeper into the concept of constructive combination and its role in forming the bonding molecular orbital. As mentioned earlier, when the two 1s atomic orbitals of hydrogen atoms overlap, they undergo a constructive combination. This process leads to the formation of a new molecular orbital the bonding molecular orbital. What's truly fascinating is that this bonding molecular orbital has lower energy compared to the original atomic orbitals. This decrease in energy signifies that the hydrogen molecule, WHO, becomes more stable due to the presence of this bonding MO. Think of it as the glue that holds the two hydrogen atoms together, creating a stronger connection between them. This interaction is crucial in understanding the nature of chemical bonds and the overall behavior of molecules. Moving forward, we'll explore more examples and delve into the intricacies of molecular orbital theory. So, let's proceed to our next topic. Great job, students. We're making excellent progress in unraveling the mysteries of molecular orbital theory. In this topic, we'll broaden our perspective a bit. Molecular orbital theory is a cornerstone in our comprehension of chemical bonding, providing us with a powerful tool to explain why atoms join together to form molecules. It's essential to grasp the concept of atomic orbital overlap when atomic orbitals come into contact, they form molecular orbitals. These molecular orbitals are described by wave functions that represent their behavior and properties. Remember, not all molecular orbitals are the same. They can be categorized into different types, including bonding, antibonding, and non-bonding molecular orbitals. Each of these plays a distinct role in influencing a molecule's properties and behavior. As we progress, we'll continue to build upon these fundamentals, connecting them to real-world examples and deepening our understanding of the molecular world. So, let's move ahead to uncover more about molecular orbitals and their impact. Welcome to a crucial aspect of our exploration, students the diverse types of molecular orbitals that emerge from atomic orbital interactions. On this topic, we'll shed light on three main categories of molecular orbitals. First, we have the bonding molecular orbitals, which arise from a constructive combination of atomic orbitals. As we've discussed earlier, 
This combination results in a molecular orbital with lower energy than its atomic counterparts, and it enhances the molecule's stability. On the flip side, we encounter anti-bonding molecular orbitals, formed through a destructive combination of atomic orbitals. These molecular orbitals have higher energy levels and can weaken the bonds between atoms. Lastly, non-bonding molecular orbitals are localized around a single atom and don't significantly contribute to bonding. Understanding these distinctions empowers us to interpret the behavior of molecules more accurately. Keep up the fantastic work, and let's proceed to deepen our understanding even further. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of molecular orbital formation. Our focus shifts to the second molecular orbital, which arises through a process known as destructive combination. This process involves the merging of two atomic orbitals in a way that leads to the cancellation of electron density in the central overlapping region. The result? An anti-bonding molecular orbital is born. This anti-bonding MO holds higher energy compared to the atomic orbitals it originates from. To visualize this concept, take a look at figure 9.28, where you can spot the anti-bonding MO of H2 at the top right. As we proceed, you'll find out more about the details of this process in the closer look box later in this chapter. Let's continue our journey into the realm of molecular orbitals and their fascinating properties. Hello again, curious minds. Let's take a deeper dive into the characteristics of the anti-bonding molecular orbital. Remember, this MO holds a higher energy level compared to the atomic orbitals that give rise to it. This energy difference stems from the electron density cancellation that occurs during the destructive combination of atomic orbitals. As a result of this electron density mismatch, chemical bonding is weakened, which has significant implications for molecular stability and reactivity. Understanding these energy dynamics and their impact on chemical behavior is crucial in unraveling the mysteries of molecular interactions. To get a clearer picture, take a look at our comparative energy diagram. Showcasing the relationships between atomic orbitals, bonding MO, and the higher energy antibonding MO. Our exploration continues with more insights into the intricacies of molecular orbitals. Greetings, knowledge seekers. Let's unravel the role of destructive combination in shaping molecular properties. We've already seen how the antibonding molecular orbital arises from this process. Now, let's explore its impact on bond strength. While the bonding molecular orbital reinforces chemical bonds, the anti-bonding MO weakens them due to the cancellation of electron density. This interplay between bonding and anti-bonding MOS is what dictates the stability and reactivity of molecules. Additionally, keep in mind that the distribution of electron density plays a key role in this phenomenon. This understanding allows us to predict and explain the behavior of molecules in various scenarios. For a visual representation of these concepts, take a look at our illustrative diagram showcasing the formation of both bonding and anti-bonding MOS. As we venture forward, you'll gain a more comprehensive grasp of the intricacies at play. Good day, students. Today, we're diving into the captivating world of molecular orbital formation and its crucial role in covalent bonding. As we explore this topic, you'll discover the remarkable way electrons behave in this context. Imagine a scenario where we have two nuclei, and between them, there's a fascinating concentration of electron density. This density forms what we call a bonding molecular orbital, or MO for short. Think of it as a sausage-shaped region where electrons prefer to hang out. How does this happen? Well, it's the result of combining two atomic orbitals. These atomic orbitals, with their wave functions, come together in the region between the nuclei, creating this unique electron-rich space. Now, why is this important? An electron residing in this bonding MO is actually more stable and has lower energy compared to an electron in the one's atomic orbital of a standalone hydrogen atom. Isn't that intriguing? This stability plays a significant role in the formation of covalent bonds between atoms. The attraction of the electron to both nuclei is what contributes to this stability. This bonding MO essentially acts as a glue, holding the atoms together in a covalent bond. So, as we journey through the intricacies of molecular orbitals and covalent bonding, 
Keep in mind the amazing ways in which electrons and atomic orbitals interact to create these bonds. Let's move forward and delve deeper into this fascinating realm. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of molecular orbital theory and exploring the intriguing concept of anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Molecular orbital theory, or MO theory for short, is an essential framework for understanding how atoms combine to form molecules and the resulting electronic structure. Now, let's take a closer look at anti-bonding MOS. Unlike their bonding counterparts, which encourage the formation of chemical bonds between atoms, anti-bonding MOS display a distinct behavior. In these orbitals, the electron density between the nuclei is minimal, almost non-existent. Instead, the wave functions of atomic orbitals counteract each other, resulting in heightened electron density on opposing sides of the nuclei. This leads to a curious exclusion of electrons from the bonding region itself, hindering the bond formation process. Interestingly, a defining feature of anti-bonding MOS is the presence of a nodal plane, represented as a dashed line, where the electron density is essentially zero. This plane is a fundamental aspect of these orbitals and is crucial to their properties. It's important to note that electrons occupying anti-bonding MOS experience repulsion from the bonding region, making them less stable and higher in energy compared to electrons found in the 1s atomic orbital of a hydrogen atom. This insight into the world of molecular orbital theory sheds light on the complex dance of electrons and the profound impact it has on molecular behavior. Hello, class. Today, we're venturing into the realm of atomic and molecular orbitals, and we'll explore their fascinating energy interactions. Let's start with energy level diagrams, which provide a visual representation of the relative energies of atomic and molecular orbitals. On these diagrams, you'll find the atomic orbitals on the left and right sides, and the molecular orbitals in the middle. Think of these diagrams as windows into the world of electron interactions. Just like atomic orbitals, each molecular orbital has the capacity to house two electrons with their spins paired, a principle known as the Pauli exclusion principle. This principle ensures the stability and unique behavior of electrons within these orbitals. Now, let's dive deeper into the intriguing concept of energy level diagrams and their significance in understanding molecular interactions. Welcome back, students. Our journey continues, with a closer look at atomic orbital energies and their interactions. Specifically, we're examining the energy levels of one's atomic orbitals. These orbitals, found in individual atoms, have specific energy levels that play a crucial role in forming molecular orbitals. When these atomic orbitals interact, they create molecular orbitals with varying energy levels. Imagine these interactions as a dance of electrons, each contributing to the overall stability and properties of molecules. The layout of energy level diagrams aids our understanding of these interactions, providing a visual roadmap for the journey of electrons as they transition from individual atomic orbitals to shared molecular orbitals. Greetings, dear students. Let's delve further into the captivating world of molecular orbitals and the intricate dance of electrons within them. As atoms come together to form molecules, their atomic orbitals interact and merge to create molecular orbitals. These molecular orbitals provide a shared space for electrons from different atoms to occupy. Just like a pair of dance partners, each molecular orbital can accommodate two electrons, and these electrons have their spins paired, abiding by the Pauli exclusion principle. This pairing of electrons within molecular orbitals shapes the properties and behavior of molecules, influencing everything from their stability to their reactivity. Isn't it incredible how these seemingly small interactions have such a profound impact on the world around us? Hello again, bright minds. Our exploration of energy level diagrams takes a deeper turn as we explore their role in the formation of molecular orbitals. These diagrams provide a visual journey through the energy changes that occur when atomic orbitals interact to create molecular orbitals. As electrons find their place in these molecular orbitals, new energy levels emerge, bringing about the concepts of bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. 
The delicate balance of electron interactions within these orbitals determines whether a molecule is stable or prone to reactivity. Our understanding of these energy changes opens a window into the intricacies of chemical bonding and the forces that govern molecular structures. Now, let's delve deeper into the specifics of how these interactions take place and how they influence the properties of the molecules we encounter. But before we do that, let's take a moment to reflect on the fundamental concepts we've covered so far. Remember, building a strong foundation of knowledge will be key as we navigate through the complexities ahead. All right, let's proceed with our exploration. Get ready to unravel the mysteries of molecular orbitals and their impact on the world of chemistry. But first, take a deep breath and let the excitement for learning fill the virtual classroom. We're about to embark on a fascinating intellectual journey together. Welcome back, dear students. In our next stop on this enlightening journey, we're delving into the captivating world of molecular orbitals. Our focus is on the molecular structure of the hydrogen molecule, H2. As figure 9.29 demonstrates, the molecular orbital diagram of H2 reveals intriguing insights. Each hydrogen atom in the molecule contributes one electron, summing up to two electrons in total. These electrons find their home in the lower energy bonding ones ones two molecular orbital, and importantly, their spins are paired. Electrons that reside in bonding molecular orbitals are aptly named bonding electrons. Now, here's the key. Due to the energy advantage of the S1's molecular orbital over the individual H1's atomic orbitals, the H2 molecule enjoys greater stability when compared to two separate hydrogen atoms. Remember, Understanding molecular orbitals is like peeking into the intimate dance of electrons, revealing the secrets of a molecule's structure and stability. Ready for more? Let's continue our exploration. Hello again, dear students. Now, let's delve into the intriguing concept of electron configurations for molecules. You see, just like how we describe the arrangement of electrons in atoms, we can apply a similar concept to molecules. This involves using superscripts to indicate the occupancy of electrons within molecular orbitals. As an example, let's consider the electron configuration of an H2 molecule. The notation here is S1 S2, signifying that the first S orbital contains one electron, and the second S orbital contains two electrons. This depiction helps us understand how electrons are distributed within molecules, and it's a crucial aspect of understanding their properties. Keep in mind that electron configurations play a fundamental role in determining the chemical behavior of molecules. Let's continue our journey into the intricate world of molecular electron configurations and their significance. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the captivating world of molecular orbital theory and its impact on bond stability. As we've learned, a covalent bond stability is closely tied to its bond order. So, what exactly is bond order? It's a fundamental concept that plays a significant role in understanding the strength of covalent bonds. Bond order is calculated by taking half the difference between the number of bonding electrons and the number of antibonding electrons. This gives us a numerical value that provides insights into the bond stability. Remember, a higher bond order generally indicates a stronger and more stable bond. Now, let's proceed to our next exciting topic. Hello, dear students. Today, we're diving into a captivating aspect of chemistry known as molecular orbital theory. Our focus is on the hypothetical He2 molecule. In this molecule, four electrons are needed to fill its molecular orbitals. However, due to certain limitations, only two electrons can occupy the S1's molecular orbital. As a result, the remaining two electrons find their place in the S1 asterisk S molecular orbital. This arrangement gives rise to the electron configuration of He2 as S1 S2 S1 asterisk S2. Now, what's fascinating here is the interplay of energy. As we transition from He atomic orbitals to the He bonding molecular orbital, we experience a decrease in energy. However, this energy decrease is counterbalanced by an increase in energy when transitioning from the atomic orbitals to the He antibonding molecular orbital. The presence of two bonding electrons and two antibonding electrons in He2 results in a bond order of zero. 
Remember, a bond order of zero indicates the absence of a bond. This intriguing observation aligns with molecular orbital theory's prediction that hydrogen forms diatomic molecules, while helium does not. Let's continue our exploration into the captivating world of molecular orbital theory. Greetings, young minds. Let's delve deeper into the intricate aspects of bonding in the He2 molecule. As we just discussed, the energy decrease experienced during bonding interactions is delicately balanced by the energy increase seen in anti-bonding interactions. This equilibrium leads us to a concept called bond order. Bond order is a numerical value that indicates the strength of the bond formed between atoms. In the case of He2, the presence of two bonding electrons and two anti-bonding electrons results in a bond order of zero. This is a key point to remember. A bond order of zero signifies the absence of a bond. Molecular orbital theory's prediction for hydrogen forming diatomic molecules, while helium does not, aligns with this observation. So, as we journey through these intricate molecular interactions, keep in mind the delicate dance between energy levels and symmetry. Let's proceed to uncover more about the world of molecular bonds. Welcome back, curious minds. Our exploration takes us further into the heart of molecular orbital theory and its significance in understanding diatomic molecules. This theory plays a crucial role in explaining how atoms come together to form molecules. You see, the molecular orbitals we've been discussing provide a framework for understanding bonding interactions. Hydrogen, with its unique electronic structure, can successfully form diatomic molecules due to its ability to create stable molecular bonds. On the other hand, helium, with its distinct electron configuration, faces limitations in forming stable diatomic molecules. This brings us to the intriguing prediction made by molecular orbital theory. While hydrogen readily participates in diatomic molecular formations, helium does not exhibit the same behavior. As we unravel the complexities of molecular interactions, remember that electron configurations and energy considerations play a significant role in determining the outcomes. Let's move forward in our exploration of the molecular world. Fantastic job staying engaged, students. Let's take a moment to appreciate the insights that molecular orbital theory brings to our understanding of chemical bonding. This theory provides a deeper understanding of how electron configurations influence molecular properties. By examining the arrangement of electrons in molecular orbitals, we can predict and explain various bonding interactions. The power of molecular orbital theory lies in its ability to offer a comprehensive explanation for diverse chemical phenomena. From diatomic molecule formation, as we've discussed, to explaining the properties of complex compounds, this theory has far-reaching applications in the field of chemistry. So, as we continue our journey, remember that molecular orbital theory is a powerful tool that guides us in unraveling the mysteries of the molecular world. Stay curious and keep embracing the wonders of chemistry. Hello once again, dear students. Today, our quest for knowledge continues as we delve into the intriguing realm of molecular orbitals and electron configurations. Let's start by understanding what molecular orbitals are. These are regions in a molecule where electrons are likely to be found based on their energy levels. Now, one important concept is the idea of anti-bonding molecular orbitals. These orbitals have higher energy levels compared to the bonding orbitals and can actually weaken the bond between atoms. As we explore further, let's apply this knowledge to our friend, the helium atom. The electron configuration of a helium atom is 1 squared that's 2 electrons in its first energy level. But things get even more interesting when helium atoms come together to form a helium molecule, He. The interaction of their electrons creates molecular orbitals, and these play a pivotal role in the stability and properties of the molecule. Now, let's venture deeper into our topic. Welcome back, students. Today, we're uncovering the mysteries of electron pairing and energy levels, particularly in the context of the helium atom. You see, electrons are social creatures. They tend to pair up in the same orbital whenever possible. This is called Hund's rule. 
In our helium atom, the two electrons in the one's orbital exhibit this behavior, making the atom more stable. Now, let's explore energy levels in more detail. Electrons in the S subshell have unique energy levels. The closer an electron is to the nucleus, the lower its energy level. Also, don't forget about electron spin. Electrons have a property called spin, which can be either up or down. This spin plays a significant role in determining the arrangement of electrons in orbitals. As we journey further, you'll realize how these principles tie into the properties of molecules and their behavior. Greetings, inquisitive minds. Today, we're unearthing the secrets of molecular energy states and the magic of chemical bonds. As molecules come together, their electrons occupy different energy states within molecular orbitals. Here's where the concept of bonding molecular orbitals comes into play. These orbitals are created when atomic orbitals combine, and they play a crucial role in forming chemical bonds, particularly covalent bonds. In a covalent bond, atoms share electrons, which results in a more stable arrangement, and, often, the release of energy. This energy release is at the heart of various chemical reactions, contributing to the incredible diversity of substances we encounter. So, as we journey deeper into this subject, keep in mind the intricate dance of electrons and the bonds they form. Null. Hello, dear students. Today's journey takes us deep into the realm of molecular bonding and the fascinating world of molecular orbitals. Now, you might have learned about how atoms come together to form molecules. But have you ever wondered about the detailed mechanism behind this bonding? That's where the molecular orbital theory comes into play. It helps us understand the interaction of atomic orbitals and the formation of molecular orbitals. Within this theory, we encounter two crucial types of molecular orbitals, bonding and antibonding. Here's the twist bonding MOS are energetically favorable. When electrons occupy these orbitals, they contribute to stabilizing the molecule. However, on the flip side, anti-bonding MOS are slightly energetically unfavorable. When electrons are present in these orbitals, they actually raise the energy of the molecule. Now, imagine a scenario where there's an equal number of electrons in both bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. This equilibrium between stabilization and destabilization leads to a higher energy state for the molecule compared to separate atoms. And guess what? In this situation, no bond is formed. It's a delicate balance between these orbitals that determines whether a bond will emerge. So, my curious learners, keep this in mind as we move forward into more exciting territory. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of diatomic molecules and their diverse impacts on our lives. Diatomic molecules are composed of two atoms of the same or different elements. Some of these molecules are benign, like nitrogen, while others can be harmful, such as carbon monoxide and cyanide. On the flip side, we have essential molecules like oxygen and nitric oxide that play pivotal roles in human physiology. Yes, you heard it right even simple molecules like these have a profound influence on our bodies. For instance, the NO molecule, despite having an odd number of electrons and being highly reactive, turns out to be a crucial player in various physiological functions. It helps relax muscles, combat foreign cells, and enhance memory. In fact, the groundbreaking research on no significance in the cardiovascular system earned three scientists the prestigious Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1998. No doesn't stop there, it serves as a neurotransmitter and takes part in numerous biological pathways. Its vital role in human metabolism was quite a surprise, considering its reactive nature and electron count. Such is the importance of NO that it was even dubbed the molecule of the year in 1992. And here's an interesting tidbit. Foods like leafy greens and beetroot contain nitrates that can be converted into NO in our bodies. So, let's journey further and explore the intriguing world of diatomic molecules and their impact on our lives. Welcome back, curious minds. As we venture deeper, let's focus on the incredible no molecule and its multifaceted roles in human physiology. 
Imagine a molecule that wears many hats note as just that. It acts as a signaling agent, influencing various aspects of our well-being. Firstly, no aids in muscle relaxation, allowing our blood vessels to widen and blood flow to increase. This effect plays a pivotal role in maintaining a healthy cardiovascular system. On the front lines of our immune response, NO proves to be a powerful ally. It helps eliminate foreign cells, bolstering our body's defense mechanisms. But that's not all. NO's involvement in cognitive function is equally remarkable. It enhances memory and cognitive processes, making it a true player in our mental capacities. The discovery of these roles was so groundbreaking that it led to the Nobel Prize recognition we mentioned earlier. This tiny molecule holds the potential to influence some of the most essential functions within our bodies, and its complex interactions continue to intrigue researchers worldwide. Hello again, bright minds. Now, let's unravel the mystery behind the unconventional properties of the NO molecule that make it both fascinating and perplexing. Picture this. NO has an odd number of electrons, which is a rarity in the realm of molecules. This oddity contributes to its remarkable reactivity. You see, most molecules prefer to have an even number of electrons, leading to more stable configurations. But NO doesn't follow the norm. This odd electron count gives it a propensity for reactivity, allowing it to interact with other molecules in unique ways. This property also explains why its role in human physiology remained largely unsuspected until relatively recently. Its reactivity didn't align with the conventional wisdom of stable molecules. However, the world of science is full of surprises, and NO's unexpected significance in human health has opened up new avenues of research and understanding. Stay curious, because there's much more to uncover. Welcome, dear students, to an exciting section of our course where we delve into the molecular orbital approach to understanding bonding in diatomic molecules. This approach provides us with a deeper insight into the fascinating world of chemical bonds. Our primary focus will be on diatomic molecules from period 2 of the periodic table. By the time we're done, you'll be well equipped to employ molecular orbital diagrams to explain the bonding within these molecules. So, let's start our journey by exploring the fundamentals of this approach. Alright, everyone, let's dive into the basics of the molecular orbital approach. We know that atoms have atomic orbitals, and when two atoms come close together, their atomic orbitals can interact. This interaction leads to the formation of molecular orbitals, or MOS. Think of MOS as, orbitals, that belong to the molecule as a whole, rather than individual atoms. When atomic orbitals overlap constructively, they create bonding molecular orbitals, which enhance stability. On the flip side, when atomic orbitals overlap in a way that results in destructive interference, antibonding molecular orbitals are formed. These concepts are fundamental to understanding how atoms come together to form molecules. Now that we have a solid grasp of the molecular orbital approach, let's see how it applies to diatomic molecules from period 2. When two atoms from this period combine, they generate molecular orbitals specific to their bonding. The most common types of bonds we encounter are sigma, sigma, and pi, pi, bonds. Sigma bonds form when atomic orbitals overlap head-on, allowing for strong bonding along the internuclear axis. Pi bonds, on the other hand, arise from the sideways overlap of p orbitals. Let's explore this concept further with examples. We'll take a look at molecular orbital diagrams for molecules like O2 and N2, illustrating the formation of these bonds. All right. Let's get into the specifics with a focus on molecular oxygen, O. We'll delve into its molecular orbital diagram, showcasing the intricate process of bond formation. You'll see how sigma and pi bonds emerge, each contributing to the overall stability of the molecule. We'll also explore the electron configuration within these molecular orbitals, considering how they get filled according to the Aufbau principle. By understanding the distribution of electrons, we can calculate the bond order, which is a crucial indicator of a molecule's stability. So, 
Get ready to unravel the molecular mysteries of O. As we continue our journey through molecular orbitals, let's turn our attention to nitrogen, N2. We'll explore the molecular orbital diagram for nitrogen and compare it to the one we examined for oxygen. By doing so, we'll uncover the unique bonding characteristics of N2. We'll delve into how bonding and antibonding interactions shape the stability of the molecule and influence its properties. This comparison will give us valuable insights into the variation of molecular bonding within period 2 diatomic molecules. Congratulations! My brilliant students! You've successfully journeyed through the world of molecular orbital diagrams for period 2 diatomic molecules. You've gained a solid understanding of how these diagrams help us comprehend the intricate bonding processes that occur on a molecular level. Armed with this knowledge, you can now confidently describe the bonding in various diatomic molecules. And remember, the skills you've acquired here extend beyond just diatomic molecules. You can apply the molecular orbital approach to other molecules and systems, opening up new realms of understanding in the world of chemistry. Keep up the excellent work. Welcome back, students. Today, we're diving into the intriguing realm of molecular orbital theory. Let's start by understanding some key concepts that form the foundation of this theory. First, the number of molecular orbitals, MOS, formed equals the number of atomic orbitals that are combined. This principle is essential to understand how atoms come together to create molecules. Next, for effective combination, atomic orbitals with similar energy levels combine most efficiently. This leads us to our third point. The effectiveness of combination is directly proportional to the degree of overlap between these orbitals. As the overlap increases, the energy of the resulting bonding MO is lowered, while the energy of the anti-bonding MO is raised. This concept is crucial for predicting the stability and nature of molecular bonds. Now, let's talk about electron pairing. According to the Pauli exclusion principle, each MO can accommodate a maximum of two electrons, with their spins paired. This brings us to Hund's rule, which states that when MOS of the same energy level are populated, one electron enters each orbital, with the same spin, before spin pairing occurs. This principle helps us understand the arrangement of electrons in molecular orbitals. As we delve deeper into molecular orbital theory, keep in mind how these rules guide us in understanding the complex world of molecular structures and bonding interactions. Hello again, students. Let's dive even deeper into the mechanics of atomic orbital combination and molecular orbital formation. When atomic orbitals come together, they form what we call molecular orbitals, MOS. This phenomenon is fundamental to understanding how molecules are structured and how they behave. Remember, the key to effective combination is the overlap of atomic orbitals, and this overlap is most efficient when the orbitals have similar energy levels. As a result of this combination, we get two types of molecular orbitals. Bonding molecular orbitals, BMOs, and anti-bonding molecular orbitals, ABMOs. BMOs have lower energy compared to the original atomic orbitals, indicating the formation of stable bonds. On the other hand, ABMOs have higher energy than the atomic orbitals, which suggests a destabilizing effect. This brings us back to the importance of overlap. The greater the overlap, the stronger the bonding interactions, leading to more stable molecules. The concept of molecular orbitals and their energies is pivotal in predicting the strength of chemical bonds. As we progress, you'll see how these principles play a role in shaping the properties of various compounds. Great to have you with us, students. Now, let's explore how electrons populate molecular orbitals and the rules that govern their arrangement. According to the Pauli exclusion principle, each molecular orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, but with opposite spins. This principle ensures that no two electrons in the same MO have the same set of quantum numbers, which maintains the stability of atoms and molecules. When it comes to electron distribution, we encounter Hund's rule. This rule states that when MOs of the same energy level are populated, electrons enter each orbital individually, with the same spin, before spin pairing occurs. 
This configuration optimizes electron repulsions and stabilizes the molecule. Spin pairing is the process of filling the remaining spots in a molecular orbital with electrons of opposite spin, ensuring a balanced distribution. The arrangement of electrons in molecular orbitals has far-reaching effects on a molecule's behavior, properties, and reactivity. As we journey deeper, you'll discover how this intricate dance of electrons shapes the world of chemistry. Good day, students. Today's topic is truly electrifying as we delve into the realm of molecular orbitals and their role in the bonding of lithium-2 and beryllium-2 molecules. But before we dive into these specific examples, let's establish a foundation by understanding what molecular orbitals are and how they shape the bonding within molecules. As we've learned, the electron configuration of lithium is 1SUUS1. Now, imagine heating lithium metal to extreme temperatures, above its boiling point of Wabfu degrees Celsius. In this vapor phase, lithium-2 molecules emerge. The Lewis structure for lithium-2 hints at a li li single bond. This structure, however, only scratches the surface. Let's journey deeper by exploring molecular orbitals and how they contribute to the fascinating bonding in lithium-2. Alright, students, let's get into the nitty-gritty of molecular orbital theory. This theory offers a profound insight into how atoms come together to form molecules. At its core, it involves the combination of atomic orbitals to create molecular orbitals. Imagine atomic orbitals, those regions where electrons are most likely found around an atom's nucleus. When atoms approach each other to form a molecule, their atomic orbitals can overlap, leading to the formation of new molecular orbitals. These newly formed orbitals come in two flavors, bonding and antibonding. Bonding orbitals bring electrons closer to the nuclei, promoting stability, while antibonding orbitals have the opposite effect. They actually have less electron density between the nuclei, weakening the bond. Now, let's see how this theory applies to our Li2 molecule. Great job following along, students. Now, let's apply the molecular orbital theory to our Li2 molecule. As the two lithium atoms approach each other, their atomic orbitals overlap. This overlap can result in two types of molecular orbitals, sigma, sigma, and sigma star, sigma asterisk, orbitals. The sigma orbital arises from constructive interference, meaning the waves of the atomic orbitals align positively, enhancing electron density between the nuclei. This leads to a stable bonding molecular orbital. On the other hand, the sigma star orbital forms from destructive interference, where the waves align negatively, reducing electron density between the nuclei. This results in an antibonding orbital, weakening the bond. Keep in mind that the strength of the bond between the two lithium atoms hinges on the balance between these two types of molecular orbitals. Let's expand our horizons and take a look at the B2 molecule, which features beryllium atoms. Remember that beryllium's electron configuration is 1s to s2. Comparing this to lithium configuration, you'll notice some differences. These disparities play a crucial role in the bonding characteristics of the B2 molecule. Similar to lithium, B2 molecules are also found in the vapor phase when beryllium is heated. The process of molecular orbital formation in B2 shares similarities with what we discussed for lithium. The molecular orbitals, their bonding, and antibonding nature are influenced by the electron configuration of beryllium. As we continue, you'll see how these differences contribute to the unique bonding in B2. Welcome, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of atomic orbital interactions in molecules. Our journey begins with the captivating example of lithium. As shown in figure 9.32, we can observe a significant difference in energy levels between the Li1s and 2s atomic orbitals. This difference leads us to an important assumption. The 1s orbital on one lithium atom interacts specifically with the 1s orbital on the other lithium atom, following what we call rule 2. Similarly, the 2s orbitals of the two atoms interact exclusively with each other. This concept of orbital interactions helps us understand the formation of molecular structures. Now, 
Let's move on to explore the exciting outcomes of combining these atomic orbitals. Great job grasping the concept of atomic orbital interactions, students. Now, let's delve deeper into the fascinating phenomenon of molecular orbitals. When we combine atomic orbitals from different atoms, we create what we call molecular orbitals, or MOS, as outlined in Rule 1. This process is pivotal in understanding the structure and properties of molecules. In our specific example of lithium, combining the 1s and 2s orbitals from two lithium atoms leads to the formation of four distinct molecular orbitals. Yes, you heard that right, four MOS. These molecular orbitals play a crucial role in determining various properties of molecules. Let's continue our journey to uncover the intricate details behind this orbital interaction. Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the world of molecular orbitals in lithium, an element with fascinating electron interactions. In our previous discussions, we explored how the 1's orbitals in lithium combine to create both bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals, much like we saw in the case of hydrogen. The story doesn't end there. The 2's orbitals of lithium also have a role to play. Just like before, they interact in a similar manner, generating bonding 1's 2's 2 and antibonding 1's 2's 2 molecular orbitals. But, here's the twist. These interactions are influenced by the extent of overlap between the constituent atomic orbitals. Because the 2's orbitals of lithium extend further from the nucleus than the 1's orbitals, they can overlap more effectively. As a result, the energy difference between the antibonding S2S asterisk and bonding S2's orbitals is more pronounced than that between the corresponding S1's orbitals. This stems from the fact that the 1's orbitals are at a lower energy level than the 2's orbitals. Consequently, the energy of the S1's antibonding molecular orbital is considerably lower compared to the energy of the S2's bonding molecular orbital. Remember, these interactions are all about the delicate dance of electrons and atomic orbitals, creating the rich tapestry of molecular orbitals. Now, let's journey deeper into this captivating realm of electron interactions and energy dynamics. Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of molecular electron configuration and bonding, specifically focusing on the lithium molecule, Li2. To start, let's recall the electron configuration of a single lithium, lithium, atom, which is 1s2 sigma 2s2 s2. Now, when two lithium atoms come together to form a Li2 molecule, something interesting happens. The six electrons from both atoms need to find their places in molecular orbitals, or MOS. As illustrated in figure 9.32, these electrons occupy different MOS, including S1S, S1S, and S2S, each with two electrons. This gives us the total electron configuration of Li2 as S1S2, S1S2, SS2, S2. Now, let's move on to the concept of bond order. Welcome back, everyone. In our journey through the world of molecular bonding, it's time to grasp the concept of bond order. Bond order essentially tells us about the strength of the bond between atoms in a molecule. For lithium U, let's break down the bond order calculation. We have four electrons in bonding orbitals and two electrons in antibonding orbitals. So, bond order equals open parenthesis 4 minus 2 close parenthesis, which is equal to 2. This signifies a single bond. To recap, the bond order of Li is 1, meaning a single bond holds the two lithium atoms together. This observation aligns beautifully with the Lewis structure of lithium U. Hello again, young minds. Let's explore the implications of our discoveries. As we've seen, the bond order of Li 2 perfectly aligns with its Lewis structure, a single bond is present. This bond arrangement contributes to the molecule's stability. Our journey into molecular orbital, MO, theory has allowed us to dive deep into the mechanics of bonding. By understanding how electrons are distributed within MOS, we gain insights into the nature of chemical bonds. Electron configuration plays a pivotal role in predicting how atoms will bond and interact with one another. With this knowledge, we've unveiled the intricate details of the Li2 molecule's formation and bonding. Hello, dear students. 
Today, we're going to delve into an intriguing concept known as molecular orbital theory and its application in understanding bonding, specifically in the case of the diatomic molecule Li2. Now, imagine that atoms, when brought together to form molecules, don't just retain their atomic orbitals. Instead, they blend these atomic orbitals to create molecular orbitals, or MOS. In the case of Li2, something fascinating happens with the one's orbitals. These orbitals, both S1s and S1s, are completely filled. Surprisingly, they contribute almost nothing to the bonding in Li2. The reason lies in the fact that the single bond in Li2 is primarily a result of the interaction between the valence 2's orbitals of the two lithium, Li, atoms. It's like the dance of electrons as they find their ideal positions to create a bond. This brings us to an important principle. Core electrons, like those in the one's orbitals, usually don't play a significant role in bonding within molecules. This rule aligns with the approach we use when drawing Lewis structures we mainly focus on valence electrons. As a result, we can skip further consideration of the one's orbitals while exploring other diatomic molecules from period 2 of the periodic table. So, remember, when it comes to bonding, it's often the valence electrons that take the spotlight. Now, let's move forward and learn more about the fascinating world of molecular bonding. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into an exciting topic. Molecular orbitals resulting from the combination of two p-atomic orbitals. Before we jump into this, remember that molecular orbitals play a crucial role in understanding the behavior of molecules. Now, as we consider the period two diatomic molecules, let's first explore the fascinating world of two p-atomic orbitals. In figure 9.33, we see the interactions between these p orbitals. Notice that we've taken the internuclear axis as our z-axis for convenience. The two p-z orbitals face each other head to head, and just like with s orbitals, we have two ways to combine them. The first combination brings electron density between the nuclei, giving rise to a bonding molecular orbital. On the other hand, the second combination excludes electron density from the bonding region, leading to an anti-bonding molecular orbital. Both of these molecular orbitals have their electron density aligned along the internuclear axis, making them S-type molecular orbitals, S2P and S2P. As you can see, the world of molecular orbitals is both intricate and fascinating. So, let's continue our journey to unveil more about this mesmerizing realm. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating realm of molecular orbitals and the intriguing concept of pi bonds. Now, let's imagine the two p atomic orbitals overlapping in a unique way sideways. This overlapping results in the concentration of electron density both above and below the internuclear axis. We refer to these special molecular orbitals as pi 1 p 2 molecular orbitals, drawing an analogy to p bonds. It's quite similar to what we've learned about p bonds so far. Specifically, we can form one p bonding molecular orbital by combining the two px atomic orbitals and another one by combining the two py atomic orbitals. Importantly, these two p2p molecular orbitals possess the same energy level. In other words, they're degenerate. Furthermore, this principle applies to two degenerate p 2 p antibonding molecular orbitals as well. These anti-bonding orbitals are oriented perpendicular to each other, just like the 2p atomic orbitals from which they originate. This concept helps us understand the complex nature of molecular interactions. Let's move forward and explore more about molecular orbitals and their intriguing properties. Hello again, dear students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of molecular orbitals and their intriguing energy levels. Our journey starts with a fundamental concept orbital overlap. When two 2pz orbitals on different atoms directly point towards each other, their overlap is more pronounced compared to the overlap between 2px or 2py orbitals. This has profound implications for the energy levels of molecular orbitals. Specifically, the S2p molecular orbital is predicted to be more stable due to the greater overlap of the 2pz orbitals. On the other hand, the p2p molecular orbitals might be at slightly higher energy levels. Now, 
Let's shift our focus to another interesting aspect of this topic. Hello there, class. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of electron configurations in molecules. Let's start by combining our understanding of molecular orbitals formed from S and P orbitals. As we progress, we'll construct an energy level diagram that specifically applies to homonuclear diatomic molecules of the elements boron through neon. These elements have valence atomic orbitals consisting of 2s and 2p orbitals. Now, pay attention as we explore the intriguing features of this energy level diagram. Welcome back, dear students. Let's dive deeper into the molecular orbitals of boron through neon. We know that these molecular orbitals are a result of the combination of S and P atomic orbitals. The energy level diagram we're exploring today provides us with a visual roadmap of electron distributions in these homonuclear diatomic molecules. Through this diagram, we gain valuable insights into the electron configurations of each element within this range. Great job keeping up, class. Now, let's focus on the arrangement of valence electrons in the 2s and 2p atomic orbitals within these elements. The energy level diagram we're examining illustrates the distribution of these crucial valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons play a pivotal role in the chemical reactivity of an element. Our exploration of the relationship between electron configuration and bonding behavior will shed light on the intricate world of molecular interactions. Let's wrap up our discussion with a look at the most important takeaways from our energy level diagram exploration. By analyzing the diagram, we've uncovered interesting patterns in energy levels, electron configurations, and electron distribution among these elements. The variation in these aspects across the elements provides us with valuable insights into the periodic trends and atomic behavior. Remember, the world of electron configurations is intricate, and our understanding of it enhances our comprehension of the fundamental principles governing chemical interactions. You've done an excellent job engaging with the complexities of electron configurations, dear students. Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned about the electron configurations for elements boron through neon. Our journey through energy level diagrams has given us a powerful tool to decipher the behavior of atoms. As we move forward, get ready to explore more captivating aspects of molecular properties and delve into the realm of chemical bonding. Your dedication to understanding these fundamental concepts is truly commendable. Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of molecular orbital theory and exploring the energy levels associated with different atomic orbitals. Let's begin by understanding the key concept of molecular orbital theory and its significance in chemistry. In our discussion, we'll specifically focus on the energy differences between 2s and 2p atomic orbitals. We know that the 2s atomic orbitals have substantially lower energy levels compared to the 2p atomic orbitals. This difference in energy levels has profound implications for the formation of molecular orbitals. As a result, both molecular orbitals formed from the 2s orbitals are lower in energy than the lowest energy molecular orbital derived from the 2p atomic orbitals. This disparity in energy levels plays a crucial role in the interactions between atoms and the resulting molecular structures. Now, let's move forward to explore the overlap of specific atomic orbitals. In our previous topic, we learned about the energy levels of 2s and 2p atomic orbitals. Now, let's dive into the concept of orbital overlap and its impact on molecular orbital formation. When it comes to the overlap of atomic orbitals, the 2pz orbitals exhibit greater overlap compared to the 2px and 2py orbitals. This specific overlap pattern leads to the creation of unique bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Notably, the S2P bonding molecular orbital is lower in energy than the P2P molecular orbitals due to the favorable overlap. On the other hand, the anti-bonding S2P molecular orbital has higher energy than the P2P molecular orbitals. 
This interplay between overlap and energy levels shapes the stability and properties of molecules we encounter in the world of chemistry. Now, let's proceed to explore the degeneracy of certain molecular orbitals. As we journey deeper into molecular orbital theory, we encounter a fascinating concept known as degeneracy. This refers to the phenomenon where multiple molecular orbitals possess the same energy level. In our current context, both the p and p 2p molecular orbitals exhibit this degeneracy. What does this mean? Well, it means that there are two degenerate molecular orbitals of each type p and p 2p. This intriguing property plays a role in shaping the electronic structure of molecules and influencing their reactivity. Our exploration of molecular orbital theory is shedding light on the intricate details that govern chemical interactions and molecular behavior. With these insights, we're on our way to a deeper understanding of the molecular world. Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing realm of atomic orbitals and their interactions. Our journey begins with an exploration of figure 9.38 and the addition of electrons to it. However, before we proceed, there's a crucial aspect we must consider. The interaction between the 2's orbital on one atom and the 2p orbitals on the other. Up until now, our diagrams assumed no interaction between these orbitals. However, in reality, interactions can and do occur. To visualize this, take a look at figure 9.39, which showcases the overlap between a 2's orbital on one atom and a 2p orbital on another. These interactions have a significant impact on the energy differences between the orbitals. As we observe in figure 9.39, the s orbital energy decreases, while the s orbital energy increases due to these interactions. Interestingly, these interactions can be potent enough to even alter the energetic ordering of molecular orbitals. Let's dive deeper into this concept and explore how these interactions affect specific molecules. Good day, students. In today's lesson, we're delving into the fascinating realm of molecular orbital theory and electron configurations. Now, as we journey through this topic, remember that the energy ordering of molecular orbitals plays a crucial role in determining how electrons are distributed. Let's take a closer look at diatomic molecules from B2 to Na2 and how their electron configurations are determined based on this concept. As we start, consider the example of a boron atom, which possesses three valence electrons. Please keep in mind that we're disregarding the core one's electrons for now. When dealing with B2, we need to place a total of six electrons into molecular orbitals. Specifically, four of these electrons fill the S2s and S2s asterisk molecular orbitals, resulting in no net bonding. The fifth electron finds its place in one of the P2P MOS, and the sixth electron occupies the other P2P MO, both with the same spin. As a result of this arrangement, B2 attains a bond order of 1. This bond order reflects the strength of the bond within the molecule. Now, as we proceed, keep in mind that our exploration of molecular orbital theory and electron configurations will continue to reveal the intricate world of chemical bonding and electron interactions. Good day, students. Welcome to today's lesson where we'll be delving into the intriguing world of magnetic properties. Our journey begins with substances that possess a fascinating property known as diamagnetism. What is diamagnetism, you ask? Well, it's the phenomenon where substances with no unpaired electrons experience a weak repulsion when subjected to a magnetic field. This means they seem to be pushed away by the magnetic force. This stands in contrast to paramagnetism, which we'll explore shortly. Now, let's move on to a unique method for measuring these magnetic properties, as shown in figure 9.41. Alright, students, let's delve deeper into the concept. Imagine we have a method to measure these magnetic properties. This method involves weighing a substance in two scenarios, with the presence of a magnetic field and without it. Now, here comes the interesting part. If the substance is paramagnetic, it appears to weigh more when in the magnetic field. On the other hand, if the substance is diamagnetic, it appears to weigh less when in the magnetic field. 
It's like the substance is responding to the magnetic force in its own unique way. Now, let's tie all this knowledge together. We've discussed diamagnetism and paramagnetism, along with the method to measure these properties. But how does this align with real-world examples? Enter the period 2 diatomic molecules. These molecules exhibit specific magnetic behaviors, and interestingly, these behaviors correlate with their electron configurations, as shown in figure 9.40. This tells us that, the arrangement of electrons plays a significant role in determining the magnetic properties of substances. It's like a hidden code that influences how a substance responds to a magnetic field. Good day, students. Today's lesson brings us into the realm of molecular properties and their fascinating interplay with bond orders. As we delve into this topic, We'll uncover the intriguing relationship between electron configurations in molecules and two crucial properties, bond distances and bond enthalpies. So, what exactly is bond order? Well, it's a measure of the number of chemical bonds between a pair of atoms. As bond order increases, something interesting happens. Bond distances actually decrease, and simultaneously, bond enthalpies increase. Let's take a closer look at nitrogen gas, N2. This molecule boasts a bond order of 3, which results in a remarkably short bond distance and a significant bond enthalpy. This robust bond contributes to N2S stability and its reluctance to react with other substances to form nitrogen compounds. But remember, while bond order is a key player, it's not the sole influencer. Other factors, such as nuclear charge and orbital overlap, also come into play when determining bond distances and bond enthalpies. Now, let's journey further into the intricate world of molecular properties and their underlying principles. Hello again, students. Let's venture into the world of molecular orbital theory with a captivating example, the bonding in O2. As we've learned, molecular orbital theory helps us understand how atoms come together to form molecules. In the Lewis structure of O2, you'll notice a double bond between the oxygen atoms, and all the electrons are paired up. However, molecular orbital theory provides us with a more detailed perspective. It explains how these electrons are distributed among molecular orbitals, which are regions where electrons are likely to be found. In the case of O2, the molecular orbital diagram reveals the fascinating interaction between atomic orbitals, resulting in bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. This intricate dance of electrons helps us comprehend the stability and properties of molecules. Let's delve even deeper into this intriguing topic. Hello again, dear students. Now, let's venture into the world of molecular bonds and delve into the fascinating characteristics of oxygen molecules. Our second topic brings us to a discussion about the bond between two oxygen atoms. The distance between these atoms in the oxygen molecule is remarkably short, measuring just 121 picometers. Additionally, the bond enthalpy, which represents the energy required to break this bond, is quite high, clocking in at 1,495 kilojoules per mole squared. These two factors strongly suggest the presence of a double bond between the oxygen atoms. You might wonder, what's a double bond? Well, it's a type of covalent bond where two pairs of electrons are shared between the atoms instead of just one. Let's keep exploring to uncover more intriguing details. Welcome back, dear students. In our ongoing exploration of chemical concepts, let's delve into the intriguing realm of molecular properties. Today, we're discussing a fascinating phenomenon called paramagnetism. Now, as you might remember, molecules can contain unpaired electrons. These unpaired electrons are responsible for a molecule's paramagnetic nature. Interestingly, this property isn't always obvious from the molecule's Lewis structure alone. Take molecular oxygen, O, as an example. Its Lewis structure doesn't explicitly show its paramagnetic character. To truly understand this, let's turn our attention to figure 9.42 which demonstrates the paramagnetic behavior of O. This experimental observation aligns perfectly with the prediction made by molecular orbital, MO, theory. 
Speaking of Mo theory, it not only predicts paramagnetism but also correctly determines the bond order of two, just like the Lewis structure did. Isn't it amazing how various theories and models help us unlock the hidden secrets of molecules? Now, let's venture deeper into this molecular enchantment. Greetings once again, attentive learners. Our intellectual journey now guides us through the intricate pathways of molecular orbital, MO, theory. This theory stands as a robust tool that enables us to predict various molecular properties, unlocking the hidden behaviors that Lewis structures may not immediately reveal. As we just discussed, one such phenomenon is paramagnetism, which arises from the presence of unpaired electrons. Unlike the Lewis structure, MO theory takes these unpaired electrons into account, allowing us to accurately predict a molecule's paramagnetic nature. Our trusty example, O2, showcases this beautifully. MO theory not only unravels paramagnetism but also aligns with the bond order prediction from the Lewis structure. Isn't it impressive how these theories complement each other, enriching our understanding of molecular bonding? So, let's continue our exploration unearthing more captivating aspects of molecular science. Hello again, inquisitive minds. Our focus remains steadfast on the enigma of molecular oxygen, OU, and its paramagnetic character. As we've learned, OU possesses unpaired electrons, rendering it paramagnetic. This intriguing aspect becomes even more evident when we examine real-world evidence. Behold. Figure 9.42 presents us with a visual representation of OU paramagnetism. This experimental observation serves as a confirmation, aligning perfectly with the prediction set forth by our trusty companion, Mo theory. The close correspondence between theory and experiment provides us with deeper insights into the behavior of molecules. It's remarkable how theory and practice come together to paint a complete picture. With this understanding in mind, let's journey further into the realm of molecular mysteries. Greetings once more, attentive scholars. Our exploration wouldn't be complete without delving into the concept of bond order and its connection to Mo theory. Bond order holds significant importance in understanding the stability and reactivity of molecules. The fascinating aspect here is how different theories approach this concept. We've already seen that both Lewis and Mo theories predict a bond order of 2 for O2. However, Mo theory goes beyond, providing us with a more precise understanding. This precise prediction aligns seamlessly with experimental evidence and solidifies our comprehension of molecular bonding. Think about it, accurate bond order determination lets us grasp the stability and behavior of molecules in various chemical contexts. So, Let's keep this concept close as we venture forth into the depths of molecular intricacies. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the captivating realm of molecular orbital theory and understanding how electrons shape the bonds between diatomic molecules. Our exploration begins with a critical concept, molecular orbital theory. This theory provides insights into how electrons arrange themselves in molecular orbitals as molecules are formed. Specifically, let's look at the fascinating transition from oxygen, O2, to fluorine, F2. As we move from O2 to F2, we add two electrons, and intriguingly, these electrons completely fill the p and 2p molecular orbitals. The consequence? F2 is expected to exhibit diamagnetism and showcase a single FF bond in line with its Lewis structure. This elegant arrangement reveals the delicate interplay between electron configuration and molecular properties. Now, let's proceed to our next chapter and explore the intricate dance of electrons in molecular bonding. Hello again, bright minds. Our journey continues as we venture into the realm of electron configuration and bond order in diatomic molecules. Moving from F2 to Ne2, we notice the intriguing progression in electron arrangement. With the addition of two more electrons to create Ne2, the molecular orbitals begin to fill, both in bonding and anti-bonding arrangements. But here's the fascinating twist. The bond order of Ne2 comes out to be zero. This zero bond order implies that the molecule is not expected to exist. Why is that, you ask? 
Well, it's because the filling of both bonding and antibonding orbitals counterbalances, leaving us with an unstable molecular arrangement. It's remarkable how even slight changes in electron arrangement can significantly impact molecular stability. With this insight, let's now delve deeper into the world of molecular stability and explore its underlying principles. Greetings once again, inquisitive minds. Our exploration of the intricate dance of electrons continues as we dive into the captivating topic of electron arrangement and its direct influence on molecular stability. We've already seen how the careful balance between filling bonding and antibonding orbitals can make or break a molecule stability. The concept of bond order serves as a vital indicator of this stability. Higher bond orders usually denote greater molecular stability. Yet, the subtle nuances of electron configuration can lead to either stability or instability. Consider the examples of stable diatomic molecules versus those that are too unstable to exist. This intricate interplay between electrons and stability underscores the profound connection between the microscopic world of atoms and the macroscopic world we observe. With this thought in mind, let's embark on a journey through more molecular mysteries. Hello again, dear students. Today, we're delving into the world of heteronuclear diatomic molecules. Remember our discussions on homonuclear diatomic molecules? Well, the concepts we learned there can be expanded to heteronuclear diatomic molecules, which are molecules formed by two atoms of different elements. This brings a new layer of complexity to our understanding of molecular structure. Picture atoms from two different elements coming together to form a molecule. This fusion of different atoms opens up exciting possibilities, as we'll discover with our upcoming example. Now, let's take a closer look at a fascinating heteronuclear diatomic molecule. Nitric oxide, commonly known as NO. Nitric oxide is composed of one nitrogen atom and one oxygen atom making it a unique combination of these two elements. The specific atoms involved hold great importance in understanding the properties and behavior of this molecule. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of nitric oxide, you'll see how the interaction between nitrogen and oxygen brings about intriguing characteristics. Alright, students. Let's refresh our memory on molecular orbital theory. We've discussed how this theory helps us understand the distribution of electrons in molecules. Now, let's apply this theory to heteronuclear diatomic molecules. Just like with homonuclear diatomic molecules, we'll have bonding and antibonding orbitals here as well. These orbitals play a crucial role in determining the stability and properties of the molecule. To help visualize this, let's explore an MO diagram for a heteronuclear diatomic molecule. Now, let's put our knowledge into action by constructing a molecular orbital diagram for nitric oxide. This diagram will help us visualize the bonding and antibonding orbitals present in the molecule. By analyzing this diagram, we can determine the bond order, which gives us insights into the molecule's stability and properties. As we unravel the secrets hidden within this diagram, you'll grasp how the arrangement of electrons influences nitric oxide's behavior. Let's now shift our focus to the chemical reactivity of nitric oxide. This molecule showcases remarkable interactions due to the presence of nitrogen and oxygen. Its reactivity isn't limited to the laboratory. Nitric oxide also plays a significant role in biological systems. We'll explore how nitric oxide participates in various reactions and learn about its broader implications. Get ready to witness the dynamic nature of this molecule's chemistry. As we wrap up our exploration of nitric oxide, let's dive into its real-world applications. This molecule isn't just confined to the realm of theory. It has found its way into numerous practical uses. From serving as a signaling molecule in our bodies, to playing a crucial role in medicine and industry, nitric oxide's impact is far-reaching. Brace yourselves for an exciting journey through the diverse applications that harness the power of this incredible molecule. Dear students, we've reached 
the end of our expedition into the world of heteronuclear diatomic molecules, with a special focus on nitric oxide. We've witnessed how different atoms can come together to form molecules with unique properties. Remember, understanding molecular structure and bonding is essential in unraveling the mysteries of chemistry. I encourage each of you to continue exploring the fascinating world of science and chemistry. There's so much more to discover beyond what we've covered today. Keep your curiosity alive and your thirst for knowledge burning bright. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of molecular structures and bond orders, focusing on the example of nitric oxide, or no. Now, as we've discussed, the presence of a double bond in a molecule signifies a certain level of electron sharing. However, when we examine NO and compare its molecules to those in figure 9.40, something interesting pops up. The experimental bond length of NO measures at 115 picometers, suggesting a bond order greater than the usual double bond. This raises a question. How can we explain this using the molecular orbital, MO, model? Alright, let's get into the nitty-gritty of the molecular orbital, MO, model, which is a powerful tool for understanding the bonding in molecules like nitric oxide. In this model, we consider the concept of molecular orbitals, which arise from the combination of atomic orbitals. When atomic orbitals interact constructively, we get bonding molecular orbitals, and when they interact destructively, we have anti-bonding molecular orbitals. This interaction is vital in determining a molecule's stability. Now, back to no. To explain the bond order greater than 2, we need to consider the involvement of pi orbitals, which are important for multiple bonds like double bonds and even triple bonds. By combining atomic orbitals in a specific way, the MO model helps us make sense of NO's unique bond characteristics. Great. Now, let's delve deeper into the specifics of how the molecular orbital model helps us grasp NO's bond order greater than 2. In the MO model, we consider the formation of pi bonding and pi antibonding orbitals. These pi orbitals contribute significantly to the strength of multiple bonds. When these pi bonding orbitals form, we observe an increased electron density between the nuclei, resulting in a stronger bond. The concept of bond order comes into play, calculated as number of bonding electrons minus number of antibonding electrons, divided by 2. This formula gives us a quantitative measure of the bond's strength. By plugging in the values for NO, we can understand how the MO model accounts for its unique bond order. Bravo, students. Through our exploration of the molecular orbital model, we've successfully unraveled the mystery behind nitric oxide's bond order greater than 2. This example underscores the incredible power of the MO model in deciphering complex molecular bonding patterns. Understanding these principles isn't just important for this specific case. It forms a foundational aspect of chemistry. The MO theory guides us in comprehending the intricate dance of electrons and nuclei in molecules, enriching our understanding of the molecular world. As we wrap up our discussion, remember that chemistry is a journey of constant discovery. And the MO model is just one of the many tools that help us navigate this fascinating realm.